Hi, welcome to the 6th unit of Bioprocess Technology. In this unit, I am going to talk about inoculum preparation and downstream processing. We all know what an inoculum is. In the laboratory culture, we used to do it a lot. Either this is solid culture or a liquid culture, the starting of the culturing is by inoculating. After sterilization, we will take a loop full of microorganisms to inoculate the fresh sterilized media. But in case of industry, everything gets bigger. Instead of taking a wire loop full of microorganisms, we may be we are supposed to have liters of inoculum, maybe 100 liters or 10,000 liters of inoculum to run an industrial fermentation. In this session, I am going to discuss about basic features of inocular development. So inocular is also called a starter culture or seed culture. So more in industry, we call as seed culture. It's also called a starter culture. It's defined as the microbial culture which is actually performed the fermentation. So after the isolation of the microorganism, its modifications, its uh, optimization, we come to the fermentation process. So it is begins by its run by the microorganism. So the culture of microorganism which is used for to run the fermentation is called the starter culture or the inocula. So what are the ideal characters of an industrial inocula? I will set a few points. First one is it is should be healthy. It should have the capability to form the products in high efficiency with the high productivity. Secondly, it should be actively growing. Actively growing uh, means it should be in the uh, early log phase. So in industry, we count time as money. So if the microorganism is taking more time for growth, uh, it is more it will become more expensive. The running cost will be will go high. So we need a microorganisms in a state that they are actively growing. So in order to get an actively growing microorganism, we pre-culture the microorganism in some other media to make it active. So at the time of inoculation, the microorganism will be in the actively growing exponential phase of growth so that there won't be any delay in the growth of microorganism. Next is optimum size. As I mentioned before, in laboratory, we use small loop, loop full of microorganism for maybe 250 ml or 500 ml of culture media. But in industry, we are using huge fermentation media like maybe 10,000 liters or 1 lakh liters capacity. So such a huge fermenters need huge inocula. In most cases, we are using maybe 3 to 10 percentage of uh, medium size as the inoculation size. So the size should be high so that the time required for the fermentation will be get minimized. Uh, next is suitable morphological form. Uh, if you take an example of fungus, Fungus, most of the fungus are dimorphic in nature. They see a single cellular yeast form and a multicellular hyphae form. So some of the products are produced by the single cellular organism, like the ethanol production, is done by the uh, uh, fungus in yeast form. But some of the antibiotics are produced by fungus in the filamentous form. So what are the whatever may be the uh, product producing for morphological form, that should be the form of the inocula. So if you want the product, the, if, if our organism is producing the product in an yeast form, single cellular form, our inocula should be in single cellular form. So so that we can minimize the time and increase the yield, increase the benefits. Next is the free from contamination, which is very obvious. If the inoculum is contaminated, everything else will be contaminated. So it should be free from contamination. And it should retain the product forming capacity. Sometimes the strain uh, go to degeneration. The degeneration of strain is the loss of the product forming capacity. That should not happen. So the product forming capacity should be retained in inocula. So once we isolate the microorganism based on its properties, we will modify it and we are going to store it in you know, uh, in liquid nitrogen or uh, in life life form. Whatever form we are storing, it should retain the product forming capacity when it uh, revived as a inocula. Another parameter is the pre-adaptation. In order to minimize the lag phase and uh, adapting phase of microbial growth, most of the inocula should be pre-adapted to the fermenter conditions, the temperature, pH, the nutrition conditions, which are used in the fermenter. Uh, the microorganism um, will be adapted, pre-adapted in inoculum development. So the, the medium used for the inoculum development will have the same features as the product fermenter. So that the bacteria will be get used to the conditions so it will grow faster to cut. 
the process of preparing inoculi is called inocular preparation. Uh, it is to obtain organisms in an optimal state compatible with the inoculation of the fermenters. The inoculum preparation is also called inoculum development because it is a multi-stage process. In step by step, we are developing the inocula to match all the required characteristics of an inocula. So, in the previous slide, we have listed many characters. In order to attain all these characters, we will develop the inocula in step by step. It begins with the uh, preserved cells in minus uh, like liquid nitrogen or uh, in the life phase form. So, we will take that microorganism in the preserved form. We will develop it in step by step. First, maybe we will inoculate it in a petri plate, a small petri plate, then into a test tube, maybe then into a conical flask, into a larger conical flask. So, in step by step, we will expand the media, expand the microorganism, its size and the growth characters will be expanded. So, that's why it's called an inoculum development, okay, which is a multi-step process. And the size of inoculum should reach 3 to 10 percentage of the medium. If you are using a, like, uh, let's say 100 liters capacity fermenter, the inoculum size should be 3 to 10 liters. If you are using a 10,000 uh, liter capacity medium, uh, in the fermenter with the 10,000 uh, liters of medium, uh, it should come around like uh, 300 to 1,000 liters of inoculum should be used. So that's the size of inoculum what we are using in the industry. Uh, next process is inoculum standardization. In order to have uniform production capacities, each and every inoculum should be standardized so that the number of organism and the growth of micro growth stage of microorganism should be uniform. If there is any disparity in a difference in the properties of inoculum, there will be difference in the properties of growth and difference in the properties of product formation. In order to avoid that, we should have a system for standardization of inocula. So, in each and every time when we are inoculating, we, make, we, we should make sure that the inoculum is having or the correct number of microorganisms in the correct growth stage. So, there are different systems for that. Uh, one among that is Backland standard, which is extensively used in industry to standardize inoculum before inoculation. So, the medium which is used for inoculum development is called a seed culture. Uh, the properties of seed culture is little bit different than the production fermenter, production culture. So, the seed culture is usually less nutritious than the production media. In the seed culture, we want the inoculum expansion, not the product formation. So, its nutritive proper properties will be less than the production media and the carbon source will be less. But the nitrogen source and everything, the everything needed for the microbial growth will be more. And it is designed to shorten the lag phase and maximize productivity when it comes to the production fermenter. So, in industry, the process, the inoculant development process is undertaken in seed line. Seed line is the step, uh, like, set of process which is used for inoculant development or uh, for the seed culture. Uh, it is a steps between the preserved cell which is stored in liquid nitrogen or in lifeless form into the production fermentation. Uh, in step by step, we will expand the seed volume to inoculate the fermenter. Uh, this figure represents the process. This is a seed culture which used to be preserved uh, in some way. Then first we inoculate the seed culture into a petri plate. We will get isolated colonies. Some of these colonies will be uh, uh, preserved again as submerged culture. Uh, some of them will be taken for the uh, further inoculant development. First, to go to a shaker flask, which is basically a conical flask with a liquid medium. Then, after the inoculation, the content of the shaker flask will be used as an inoculum for a 10 liter fermenter. Then, after inoculation, this 10 liter is used to inoculate 100 liter, then to a thousand liter, then 10,000 liter, and finally a 1 lakh liter fermenter. So, this is what we call inoculation. Uh, development, inoculum development. In step by step, we cannot actually use the seed culture to directly inoculate the fer production fermenter. The volume will be less, the production uh, stage, the stage of growth will be different, production characters will be different. So, in order to get a better productivity, we should do it in step by step. And the production is actually taking place only in the final fermenter. In the, all this fermenters is used to just to develop the inoculum.
we are not getting product from this fermenter but this content this 10,000 liters will be introduced into this 1 lakh liter to get the production inoculation ratio the volume expansion factor between two uh, seed steps so how much volume is expanded from here to here that's what is called the inoculation ratio so here we use the 100 liter and in this stage we use the uh, thousand liters so the ratio is maybe one is to ten so one is used to uh, inoculate ten so that's way we can actually calculate the inoculation ratio uh, between two steps of uh, inoculant development in the early stages of inoculant development is called the pre-culture so as i shown in the previous slide we use the master culture plate on a solid media then we will take the isolated colonies uh, which, is, which is either used for uh, the preparation of submaster culture or we can use it for the shaker flask inoculation and this shaker flask inoculated with the submaster culture is subsequently cultured in steel or single used bioreactors for the inoculant development. Here is a comprehensive figure of the whole process of inoculation development but in this figure we actually uh, skip the Petroplate method because we are starting it with a submaster culture. So here we have a submaster culture. We are taking one loop full of microorganism to inoculate a 30 um, ml of media. This 30 ml of media is then incubated. After incubation, this 30 ml media is to inoculate 300 ml. Then in, after incubation, this 300 ml, many of this 300 ml flask is combined to inoculate a 50 liter fermenter this 50 liter media after growth inoculated into 60 liter then to 60 liter into a thousand liter fermentation so by step by step we are expanding the media here is the characteristics of the media used for inoculant development the first seed, second seed and main fermenter. The main fermenter is where we are using the, uh, getting the product. The first seed, you can see volume is less, second seed is high, production fermenter is very much higher. The amount of volume used is also increased directly, first to main fermenter and one another important factor is aeration. Uh, please look into this the thing. The first seed culture, aeration was 72, second seed culture, we increased the aeration into 720 and in main fermentation the aeration was 5100. What it is telling us is that when we are developing the inoculum there is change in the properties of the media, change in the physical parameters, how we are treating the media, how we are treating the cells, everything differs. Based on these parameters the microorganism will expand, increase its number, I, optimize its properties and it will, the, pro, the production capacity will be increased. So, it's a, it is not just increasing the number of microorganisms. We are using so many parameters to adjust this. We are controlling the physical parameters, chemical parameters, nutritional parameters, everything to get the ideal inoculum. Thank you so much.